everyone, before we get into the main topic of today's video, I have some unfinished business to attend to. As you may or may not know, a while back, we did an awesome charity event and raised over $10,000 for the Trevor Project. And while it was a super fun time, I promised something during that stream that I have yet to get around to doing. For some reason, I had the bright idea to promise a 100% story playthrough of Sister Location livestream if we reached the donation goal, which as you know, we did. Now if you know anything about me or this channel, you know I am not a very big fan of this game, and literally had no intention of ever playing it again after my hour long video on it. A promise is a promise though, so I guess there would be no better time than now to finally come through with my end of the deal. But there's one problem. A normal 100% playthrough of Sister Location would be painful for sure, but it's also something I've already done before. It'd be funny to watch regardless, but I feel like I need to do something a little bit extra for this stream. And then it hit me. The literal worst idea of all time hit me faster than Jumbo Josh hit Ban Bellina at the end of Garden of Ban Ban 2 for PC, Roblox, and Android Nokia brick phones. I'm gonna play the entire thing on console. <laughs> That's right. If you were unaware for whatever reason, the FNAF games have all been ported to modern consoles, and even have full controller support. However, just because they have controller support, doesn't mean they have GOOD controller support. You still have to move the in-game cursor around with the joystick, so you can imagine how terrible Night 4 and Enter Night are gonna be. Like dude, I am in no way prepared for this disaster. Uh, uh, yeah? When is the stream gonna happen? Come on, tell us already. Ah, good question my blue friend. The stream will happen. wait, why are you a cat now? Weren't you a dog only like two videos ago? What the- what the hell happened? Uh, gotta go, man. <laughs> okay. Anyway, the stream will happen tomorrow, Sunday, May 7th. Not exactly sure what time yet, but click the link in the description to check out the Uh Yeah Gaming channel to be notified when the stream goes live. Now enough talking about sister location. You all know I've already done enough of that for today. And instead, let's talk about... Sister Location. Oh god damn it, who's writing these scripts, dude? There is an hour and a half worth of Sister Location content on my channel. Do we really need to do another one? Is it that cat? Is the cat writing the scripts? Oh wait, we're actually talking about Endless Inside again? Really? Okay then, Endless Inside. Last time I talked about Endless Inside, well, I barely talked about it at all. Yes, there is a video about the game on my channel, but it's really just a stream highlights video with a couple segments of me talking with the game spliced in here or there. You can find my general opinions on the game alongside my first time reaction there. But this video is gonna be something completely different. A quick rundown of what Endless Inside is before we get into this, Endless Inside is a FNAF inspired game, yes not a FNAF fan game, a FNAF inspired game that you can purchase right now on Steam for like 8 bucks. It takes heavy influence from Sister Location and Scott Cawthon's art style. Overall, the game is really nothing to write home about. Bad voice acting, bad Google translated script, pretty much equally shit gameplay compared to Sister Location, and an even more insane challenge than Entered Night in the form of Survival Mode, which tasks you to beat the last three phases, which are just the replacements for the knights, in a row without dying. Endless Inside, by all means, is a worse game than Sister Location, which is truly a hard feat to accomplish. Okay, so what does the title mean then? How is this Sister Location bootleg better than Sister Location if I literally just said it's undoubtedly worse? Well, the title is kind of a lie, but also not really. It's complicated, let me explain. I think, as a whole, Endless Inside is a worse game than Sister Location. However, today, I am here to raise an argument that there is one phase from Endless Inside that is not only actually very good, but also better than every single attempt at a minigame Sister Location has to offer. A minigame that actually understands and respects the core FNAF gameplay loop, in a way that Sister Location never does, not even in its own FNAF-styled Entered Night. What is this mysterious minigame? Phase 4, Survival on Basement. Strap in. In the context of Endless Inside, Phase 4 comes just after you deal with a bunch of little woodens in this really awful part of the game where you just shake your flashlight back and forth for a couple minutes. Like I said, a majority of this game is hot ass. First thing to note here, most of this game takes place in environments that look way too close to Sister Location given the context of the game. This isn't some underground bunker, 
it's an art school. If you showed me these environments and told me to guess what I was looking at, art school probably wouldn't even be on that list. Phase 4, thankfully, doesn't fall into the trap of just looking like something out of Sister Location, and has some really sick visuals all things considered. But before even seeing what this minigame looks like, we're greeted with the iconic name of it, Survival on Basement. What is very clearly a shitty Google Translate job ended up being a pretty funny and iconic name for this section. Like, if it was just called Survive the Basement, Sure, I guess it's more fitting in actually proper English, but that is just way less of a memorable name than Survival on Basement is. Enough talking about the name though, let's talk about the gameplay. You're thrown into the minigame for the first time, and immediately you see some planks of wood, a flashlight, and a furry trap beneath those planks of wood. You notice you can move around the flashlight if you move your mouse, but can't do anything else besides that. The only hint the game gives you is to press the spacebar, which upon doing so, brings you upwards to a genuinely fantastic looking clock set piece. Then the music kicks in. Oh, the music kicks in! I won't spend too long on this since it's not super important to the overall point of this video, but the OST for Survival on Basement is genuinely incredible. It builds up in a way that makes the entire night feel grandiose and epic, while keeping the player on edge the whole time. It's not even designed to last the entire length of the phase, yet still works incredibly well on loops. The way the music works to make those last 100 seconds of the challenge that much more tense is something I can really appreciate. A good music track can elevate almost any experience, and this is absolutely one of them. The other songs in the OST are pretty decent as well, but this is undoubtedly my favorite track from the entire thing. Anyway, once you're at the upper section, you're greeted with a timer for 360 seconds and a small spinning wooden doll on the right side of the screen. The game doesn't tell you anything else, and leaves you alone to figure out how to play it. Which I kind of like. Sure, that kind of game design can be a little annoying and archaic if the mechanics the game wants you to learn are super complicated. But if everything is simple and self-explanatory enough, then I think it absolutely can work. Next, let's talk about the timer. I'm split enough I think this is a good addition or not. I like that the game gives you a baseline of how long you're expected to last in the minigame, but I think at the same time, it can also kill some of that tension. You're never in that evil headspace where you think you might be close to finished, but you're also not sure. Ironically, I think the 12 to 6 a.m. timing system from FNAF actually fixes this issue on both fronts, giving you a rough estimate of your progress while also not directly telling you how many seconds of the night are left. If I had to choose between no timer and a timer, I think the timer does serve a useful enough purpose that the pros outweigh the cons. Besides, the way your heart races when you're down to those last few seconds has to be one of the craziest feelings ever. At this point in the minigame, pretty much nothing is happening. You can press the spacebar again to go back down to the wooden boards, but nothing is happening down there either. So you make your way back up to the surface, and notice that the little wooden doll moved a little bit. Not a whole lot, but it definitely shifted closer to the left side of the screen. As soon as you notice that though, the doll begins to move back to its starting position on the far right. Boom. Right there, you now understand the consequences of staying on the bottom section for too long. The doll will move to the other side of the screen. From there, you can probably infer that doll close to right equals good, and doll close to left equals I am about to die. Now that the main objective of the minigame is obvious, it's just a matter of waiting to see what the game throws at you to make reaching that goal a challenge. Ah. Wait, do you hear that? Ah. Ah. It's the sponsor parrot! I thought you only appeared when I was a pirate. Ah. This is gonna make no sense, but I'm gonna say it anyway. But first, this video was sponsored by Air Up. A quick refresher for those who don't know what Air Up is. Air Up is a new and exciting way to drink water that uses flavor pods and a unique water bottle design to give a variety of different tastes all through smell alone. It's a really, really cool product that I've had the pleasure of using for the past month or so. Last time I talked about Air Up, I mentioned that I personally always struggled with getting in my daily water intake and would usually always end up drinking something else instead. Well, has anything changed since then? Yes, actually. I have found myself drinking way more water. The subtle but effective flavors from the flavor pods are really good. And ever since I started using Air Up, I've been way more motivated than ever to drink water. If anything I've said has piqued your interest in Air Up, then oh boy, do I have a deal for you. Just click the link below and use code AYEF15 for 15% off your Air Up order. Get yourself some cool stuff while also making a smarter and healthier choice. Thank you to Air Up for sponsoring this video. Whew, thanks sponsor parrot. Okay, where was I? After a few seconds, it finally happens. 
little scurrying sounds can be heard. Nothing is happening on the top section, so the obvious move would be to check the bottom. If you move your flashlight around, you'll find that little woodens can now spawn down here, and shining a light at them makes them get Thanos snapped out of existence. Survival and Basement keeps throwing new stuff at you throughout the minigame after this as well. Little woodens will spawn on the top, move to the bottom quickly to not die. Little woodens will run at you when you move from the bottom to the top, immediately go back down to not die. The furry will open its eyes and look at you, immediately make your way to the top to not die. The spinning wooden doll you keep track of will become harder to manage as its wall point will shift throughout the night. Its starting wall point is the far right of the screen, but eventually it shifts to the middle to raise the pressure even more. All these things are slowly added throughout the night, and it comes together to form a cohesive gameplay loop that's actually kind of addicting. Like, I shit talk survival and basement quite a bit in my original video, but at the end of the day, I still thought it was a fun enough minigame to beat it after my livestream was already over. Doesn't this all sound a bit familiar to you? A gameplay loop where more things are added to it over time to eventually come together as one big challenge? It sounds a lot like, oh, I don't know, Five Nights at Freddy's? Survival and Basement takes the typical FNAF formula and applies it to a single minigame rather than a set of nights, something that not a single minigame in Sister Location does. The crawling sections are the same every time, the Funtime Freddy section is close, but it's fairly bare bones and once again stays the same the whole time, all the button clicking, gameplay, doesn't meet the criteria for obvious reasons, and even the goddamn Ennard Knight is the same gameplay loop every time. Nothing is added during the night. It's the same gameplay of stopping Ennard from going to the same three endpoints for nine minutes straight. And then we have Night 4. Oh, Night 4. For starters, I think Survival and Basement and Night 4 are the most fair to compare to each other for this argument. Both take place in their respective fourth sections, both have to do with small little creatures based on wooden dolls, and both featured sad little dolls crawling around and doing stuff. One of these minigames fails at being engaging, and it's definitely not the one with the fire music in the background. Listen. Night 4 has gotten a ton of shit over the years from countless people, including myself, so I won't talk about this for too long, but Survival and Basement truly puts into perspective how bare bones and uninteresting this minigame is. While Survival and Basement has multiple sections to move back and forth from, different mechanics being added throughout the night, and is actually somewhat interesting to go through, Night 4 is pretty much the same shit every time. The gameplay of winding up the spring locks isn't fun in the slightest, and the challenge really just boils down to shaking when the mini arena is high enough, and praying to god you're winding the spring locks for a good amount of time. Knowing that the traditional FNAF gameplay philosophies can be translated to this minigame style format so well just makes me hate Sister Location even more. Because a game full of survival and basement tier minigames would be fire! However, even though I fundamentally think Phase 4 is better than any minigame in Sister Location, it's not perfect by any means. The main issue with Survival and Basement is that it relies way too much on RNG to get a good, winnable run. Remember when I talked about the little woodens that you need to murder with the flashlight? As the minigame goes on, they keep spawning in more and more. You can even have multiple spawn in at once. This means you can get in situations where so many spawn in at once back to back that you get stuck at the bottom for so long that you just have no way of recovering once you can finally get back up to the doll. I think the easiest fix to this would either be to limit the amount of little woodens that can spawn during a run so that it's not left up to chance whether you get fucked or not, that, or just get rid of the moving wall. While shrinking the area the doll can go does raise the pressure a lot, it also comes at the expense of making the challenge fair. If you could have the doll be able to go all the way to the right during the entire run, getting some bad little woodens RNG wouldn't really be the end of the world anymore. Also, the flashlight and some of the timing stuff is just downright terrible. The hitbox to kill a little wooden is so brutally specific that it often takes way longer than it should to just kill one. Also, as much as I love the mechanics that make you quickly change from the top to the bottom and vice versa, there should probably be a little more leeway for a couple of them. I think I'm pretty good at the timing now after doing it for so long, but it could also be seen as a cheap death to someone going in blind. As it stands now though, Survival and Basement is a fun, almost addicting minigame that takes the core FNAF gameplay loop and applies it to a sister location style minigame. But there's just a list of small things holding it back that add up to muddy the experience. With that said though, I still think this one minigame from this sister location bootleg is better than any minigame in sister location. At the very least, it actually understands what makes the FNAF gameplay loop so engaging in the first place. Something I can't say sister location understands. The rest of Endless Inside after Phase 4 is pretty ass, so the game really does kinda just peak here, and then immediately goes back to being shit. But for one section in the middle of the game, this Sister Location bootleg was better than Sister Location. I've been a yeah, and I'll see you all next time.